So, where from that liquid's conclusion here, gamma r is equal apparent plus gamma g here. See next one more thing. This is about that liquids. Come to that next measurement of that heat. So first we are starting with that measurement of the temperature that comes under thermometry. Now measurement of heat it comes under calorimetry. So here in the previous section how to measure the temperature now we are going to measure that heat by using that calorimetry. See the measurement of this heat the units of this we are taking this calorie and joules. What do you mean by calorie here? It is a amount of the heat supplied to that 1 gram of water from 14.5 degree centigrade to 15.5 degree centigrade. This is the amount of heat supplied to this water here. Why we are taking instead of 14.5 to 15.5 instead of why we are not mentioning this 1 degree centigrade as the heat supplied to the gram of water may be varied from suppose if you are taking this 1 degree centigrade to 2 degree centigrade whatever the heat is required this is q1 2 to 3 this is the q2 it won't be the same hence we are taking them standard temperature difference from 14.5 to 15.5 here next after that heat capacity let suppose this is a material here initially it is having some temperature T here if you are supplied to the heat dq here its temperature can be increased by T plus delta T see if you are not supplying to the heat dq here its temperature is T here as it heat is supplied dq is supplied this temperature is increased to T plus delta T here say the amount of heat supplied to the system by raising its temperature by dt we are taken as heat capacity. But this heat capacity it cannot be taken as a standard thing. Suppose if it is small material like iron if I are considering the same iron is a larger in mass. Here this iron what happens that it requires some temperature like to dt increment temperature you are giving some dq whereas this iron same increment of the temperature dt you require more dq that means this dq the temperature dt what happens the temperature is required this dq has to be varied from one mass to other mass that is what we are not conclude this particular heat capacity as a standard thing we have to consider mass. So, hence we are defining other factor that is required the heat per unit mass this we are taken as specific heat. See if I are taking this dq is equal m s dt as the specific heat is remains constant we are rightly we are writing dq is equal m s dt here we cannot show that always specific heat is a constant let s is varying with temperature then we can take this uh, dq we can take this integral m s dt here t 1 to t 2. Next after that in the gases concept we are taking that molar specific heat. Instead of mass what we are taking that number of moles. See here we are taking the specific heat C molar specific heat C here 1 by n into d q by d t that we are going to discuss about the gases in the next section. So, this gas has to be maintained by pressure constant pressure one case and constant volume is also one case detailed discussions we will discuss in the next chapter. See here 
first we are taking heat capacity, next specific heat and next third one is molar specific heat. In the heat capacity, just we are considering that particular material, how we, the amount of heat is required for raising its temperature by dt. So, dq, what we concluded that dq has to be varied from mass to mass. That is what we have standardized by taking this mass is called, taken as a factor. For gases, we are taking that number of moles. See, specific heat we are taking this Q is equal to what we let this specific heat is a constant ms into delta T here. See here is what we are taking this Q by m delta T. I am taking this as a constant now. I already we discussed that how this specific heat is varying with the temperature, we are taking that integration form here. See here, this specific heat is the amount of heat required for unit mass for raising its temperature by 1 degree centigrade. That means, let this the system, let it is maintained by some temperature T here. So, whatever the heat is required by raising its temperature by 1 unit T. Here, the heat supplied exclusively for raising its temperature, but in some cases, the temperature is maintained constant, still the same system it requires heat. That is the case latent heat. Suppose if you are taking this ice, you know that suppose if it is at 0 degree centigrade, if you are supply the heat, your ice, what happens that its temperature is not increased by 1 degree centigrade or 2 degree centigrade. First, initially what happens that ice can be melted like becomes a water and the system is again 0 degree centigrade. Whereas, previously what happens that your amount of heat is required to raise the temperature by 1 degree centigrade or 2 degree centigrade that depends upon our depends of your supplying into the heat. Here what happens that your dq first it converts its phase here what happens that in our example solid to liquid state. See, after ice getting converted completely to the water, then still you are supplying the heat, then its temperature increases. So, before temperature increment, what happens that the system can change this phase. So, the amount of heat required to change its phase, what we are calling as latent heat. So, this is the difference between the latent heat and specific heat. Once again, I am stressing this one. Here, this is the amount of heat changes its temperature, but here it changes its phase, but temperature remains constant. Here, this latent heat we can define from phase state. How can take this from solid to liquid? It is a one change phase and liquid to vapor is also one more phase. See, from the solid to the liquid, whatever the amount of heat, this can be equal to Q is equal in the ice, generally we are taking this latent heat on this one. So, suppose if you are taking from ice to water, the amount of heat is required Q is equal mass into L V here. So, here latent heat of fusion we are taking. Another factor, this another latent heat is a, what is it? latent heat of vaporization. So, this is the L f is equal Q by m here, this is L v is equal Q by m. This is about latent heat of fusion, this is about latent heat of vaporization. This is the amount of heat required per unit mass of solid that is ice to convert into liquid 
whereas this one this amount of heat required for the water to range changes to whatever that vapor here there is there is a change of the specific heat and latent heat once as the phase changes still you are supplying the heat then it converts to what happened that specific heat into the comes to the picture so this way so we discuss the theory about this particular specific heat latent heat thermal expansion of the materials and thermal expansion of the liquids and also what happened that how the particular length of the particular metal rod or area of that changes any derivations we have thermal stress also we derived Be based on this three con three con there are concepts based on that we are going to discuss some questions next class in the next class we are going to discuss this about how the thermal stress how the latent heat can affect how the temperature time period can be varied that we are going to discuss first after that <coughs> tomorrow first we focus on gases kinetic theory of gases next afterwards how the laws of thermodynamics can affect so in the heat and thermodynamics there are the three parts first one is temperature and thermometry here and next one is this second case kinetic theory of gases and loss of thermodynamics and third one is heat transfer so today we discuss completely temperature and thermometry here so we first tomorrow we'll conclude this chapter with some discussion of problems then afterwards we are going to discuss about that kinetic theory of gases and loss of thermodynamics after that we are going with the heat transfer so tomorrow first we focus on this alpha variation of alpha beta and gamma in the case of solids and where about that liquids how it varies with the gamma r gamma a and gamma g the values and applications of expansion of solids so first we focus on thermal stress and time period of simple pendulum in some cases uh, when we will see that moment of inertia also after that calorimetry so here in this case what we are seeing is the relation with the application of specific heat and latent heat then we move to the kinetic theory of the gases